For this introduction video into AI, what we're going to do is drag out a nav mesh into our world so the AI can interact or have space to move around. The first thing that I'm going to do is hide the display info. It kind of becomes distracting, so I need to go to display and scroll down to display debug. And we're going to click none. With that selected, now we're ready to actually freeze the geometry so we don't make any mistakes. So I'm going to back up. And with all my geometry selected, press F. And now it's frozen, and I won't be able to move it. The next thing I need to do is make sure that I have snapping toggled, terrain snapping, and helpers active so I can drag out or draw my nav mesh properly. Let's go to AI, Navigation Area, and what we're going to do is each click is going to create a point. And you'll notice that when I created my third point, it actually was able to draw it out. So at this final point, what I want to do is double click to end the shape. Keep in mind, if you need to make adjustments, you can actually edit the shape here by clicking Edit and then dragging outward. And then clicking Edit again to finalize. Now we want to put a guy in there and test him. So let's go back to the main Create Objects tab, go to Entity, AI, Characters, Human. Let's double click him and then put them into the middle of the nav mesh. I'm going to press Control and Shift to make sure he's at the base. And let's move him up just a little bit so we know he's above. I turn off snapping, and now we are able to go and lock him straight with the plane of the floor. I want to go up to Game and select Enable Physics AI, and now he should come alive. And to test him, we can actually press the middle mouse button by clicking. And now he'll be able to run around. And if the nav mesh is valid, he'll go to that point. So let's go ahead and disable Physics AI. And now we're ready to actually create an exclusion area. And to do so, what we're going to do is actually duplicate this. So selecting the X handle or axis, it should be yellow so you know that it's selected. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. And now what I'm going to do is get the scale tool and scale it inward. So now we have two nav meshes technically on top of each other. How does this work and why is this beneficial? Well, the reality is before we used to have exclusion areas, but now we can actually just click to exclude the nav mesh with two other nav meshes in the same area. And to do so, we need to go to our properties panel and just simply click exclusion. And now you'll see that based on the exclusion or this box that we, we were able to drag out, we're able to exclude the area and the AI would actually have to walk around it to get to the point. So we're going to enable Physics AI again, and I'm going to click at my point, and you see that he actually has to go around this. So what happens if I drag it outward? I come and click here, selecting him. He'll come back and be able to interact. So this is how flexible the nav mesh system actually is. You can quickly debug, and you don't have to actually jump into game if you use the simple system of creating the nav meshes and using the middle mouse button click to test your player.